Hi and welcome to another video here on my channel, UiPath with Jeppe. In this one, we're taking a look at building headless automations using the web driver. So let's get to it. Before we get started, I want to do a little bit of promotion for my own channel. I have some 60 or so videos in my channel, so make sure you check it out and subscribe to the channel if you want to follow that. Uh, but a few weeks ago, I did a poll on the channel uh, and I wanted to ask you guys, what should the next video be? And you guys voted, thank you for that. And I am completely <laughs> ignoring the results of the poll. And that's not true, actually. But today we're doing the video that came into third place, uh, how to use the web driver. The second place video, the UiPath Automation Hub Overview, I'm working on, but that's going to be a long video and it's going to take me a while to do it. And then, of course, the winner in the poll was the UiPath Certifications and How I Passed Them video. And I'm working on that as well. Uh, and that should be out in a week or two. But I want to build a little bit of excitement around this video because I'm going to do a giveaway and I'll tell you more about that at the end of this video. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. But today we're going to go with the third place video, how to use the web driver. So let's uh, do that and switch into studio. And I've already built a very simple automation here. And it's a browser based automation because headless automations are typically browser based automations, at least when you're talking about the web driver. This automation is very simple. It opens a browser, goes into uh, ebay.com, types into the search box. Uh, I'm looking for a Weber Q3200 cover. That's a cover for my grill. And then it clicks the search uh, button. Then it clicks the sort options uh, drop down list and clicks uh, that I want to sort by the lowest price first. Then it takes the first item in the list and gets the price range for that item saves that value into a text price variable and then writes a text file to my desktop containing nothing but that price. And then it closes the browser. So this is a very, very simple automation, but let's try and run it. So I just click uh, the debug file button here and a browser should open up. Navigates to eBay, types into the search box, clicks the search button sorts by the lowest price and then takes the lowest priced item and saves it to this text file on my desktop. And we open that and we can see that the price range is in here. So that's the automation, but we'd like to make this what they call headless. And that means that the automation is run, but without displaying the browser on screen. And it's using what's called the web driver. And the web driver is an executable that's separate from your Chrome browser executable or your uh, Firefox or whatever you're using. And what this other, this web driver executable does is it exposes an API. And then your robot actually uses this API to perform actions against a browser. So let's try and do this. And it's actually very, very simple. You take the open browser activity that I have here. And then uh, we have some uh, properties over here. Communication method is one of them and hidden is another one. And if we change this communication method to web driver and then the hidden option, set that to true and we run the same automation one more time. I'll just delete the text file here that we created just a minute ago. And now I'll run the automation again. And what we'll see is that the browser window does not open but the automation runs completely in the background using this web drive executable and the API that it exposes. And then in just a few seconds, we should see that text file appear just as when we were using the browser. And there we go, there's the text file and we can open it just to confirm that it has data in it and everything is good. So that's the basics of it. Now, in some instances, you'll need to do a little bit of setup in order to get this to work. And there are two ways of setting this up. There's an automatic way and there's a manual way. And I have run into instances where the automatic option didn't really work. So I would have to go down the manual route. And it's very simple, actually. So I'll show you how to do both now. And since it has already been set up on this machine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my virtual machine here. And on this machine, the web uh, driver has not been configured. And instead of um, having to deploy this automation and set up a process in Orchestrator and all of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable remote debugging. And remote debugging is simply a way of running an automation on another machine directly from within Studio. This is a relatively new feature that comes in really, really handy sometimes. And I've made another video about that and I'll link to it in the description below. And also at the end of this video, I'll give you a reminder to watch this video. 
But what I'll do now is I'll just go to the remote debugging option here, go and configure remote debugging, and I'll just tell it to use an unattended robot. And the unattended robot in this case is going to be my virtual machine here. That means if I disable this uh, web driver communication method and also disable the hidden option and now run this automation, it's going to run on the virtual machine and not on my local machine. So let's try and see if that works. I start the automation and it has to upload the automation to that machine. So it's going to take maybe a second or two longer, but it goes fairly quickly actually. Let's switch to the virtual machine. And we can see that the browser window opens, the search term is typed in, the search button is clicked, and then it will click the uh, sort options drop down list in just a second. It finds the results and saves it to a text file, and the automation comes to an end. And just as before, if we open the text file here on the virtual machine, we can see that it contains the text that we were looking for. Let's just throw that in the recycle bin. So what we'd like to do now is run this in headless mode on the virtual machine. And what we need to do is we need to configure the web driver executable. And what we need to do is we simply go to the machine that we want to configure it on. We open a browser and we search for Chrome web driver. Then we select this page where we can download the web driver for Chrome in this case. And then we will download the latest stable release. Then we will select, in this case, the Windows option, the win32.zip, download that file, open the file, and then I just right click and copy the file. And then here in my Windows Explorer, I'll go to my C drive. I'll create a new folder called WebDriver. And I'll paste in the file. Now we've downloaded the web driver and placed it in this folder. The last thing we need to do is we need to configure the environment variables so the system will know where to find the web driver. So we exit the folder, close the Windows Explorer, go to the start button, and then we type in environment, and we can now edit the system environment variables. Go to that, click the environment variables button, and in the system variables down here, we'll find the path property. We'll edit that. And we can see that it has a number of uh, paths listed here, and we want to add a new one. Now, if you follow the instructions on the UiPath website, they actually make a mistake there because they select, I think it's the top one, and then select Browse. And that means that this path will actually be overwritten. So instead, I'll create a new one and then click Browse. And then I'll go to this PC, my C drive, and the web driver folder. Click OK. And we can see that this is added to the bottom of the list. I'll click OK, and OK, and OK. And now the path has been configured. Now the robot service needs to be restarted in order for it to discover where the web driver is located. So we'll go to Services, find the UiPath robot service, restart it. and close the window, and now we're good to go. So what happens now if I go to my studio again, and I select the communication method, and select WebDriver, and I enable the hidden property, and make sure, of course, that remote debugging is still activated. What should happen now is that the automation should run on the virtual PC, but without the browser being displayed. And that means that this will run for a few seconds, and then the text file should magically appear on our desktop. So let's try and run it. And we can see here in the output window that uh, things are running as expected. It's uploading the project to the virtual machine and all of that. And then in just a few seconds, we should see the file appear on the desktop. And there we go. There's the eBay data that we wanted to download. Now, I said that there are two ways to configure this, the manual way and the automatic way. And the automatic way is far easier than what I just showed you. So let me just rewind a little bit and reset the, the stuff we just did. In fact, I will go to my C drive, delete the web driver folder. I'll also delete the file that we created. 
Then I'll go into my uh, environment variables, edit again, and then in the path uh, list here, we will select the web driver folder and delete it. Click OK, 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 and then go into the services. And we will restart the UiPath robot service. And just to demonstrate that now it has actually been uninstalled completely, let's run the automation one more time. And I'll just I'll just bring my uh, studio up a little bit so we can see the output window. So I'll click Run. And now what we should see is that this automation is not going to work because the web driver is no longer installed on my virtual machine. And there we go. We get the error that it's cannot find the web driver executable on that machine. So I'll just stop the automation again. And we'll go back to Studio here. And then over in the properties for the open browser activity, there is this magic option up here at the top, automatically download web driver. And if we set that to true and try and run it one more time, it's actually going to try to install the web driver on this machine. So let's try and run it one more time. And again, because everything should be running in the background now, I will just switch to the uh, virtual machine view. And then in a few seconds, we should see the text file appear on the desktop. And the automation stopped and the file appeared. So everything seems to be working. So it installed the web driver automatically. Now, where did it install it? Well, if we go to our Windows Explorer here and then type in local app data between two percentage marks. We go to the local app data for this current user, and then we have a UiPath folder. And in that UiPath folder, we have a web driver exe folder, and that is where it placed the driver for Chrome. Now, had we used a different browser, for example, Firefox, it would have downloaded the Firefox driver and placed it in this folder. So when this automatic option actually does work, and it does in most cases, it's really, really handy. But when it doesn't, you'll need to resort to the manual option that I showed you just a few minutes ago. Uh, I mentioned earlier uh, this remote debugging option in, in Visual Studio. If you're watching this on a PC and a browser, then you should see a little pop-up thing at the top right now. Otherwise, find the link to that video in the description. Also, make sure that if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really does mean a lot to my channel and to me. And also subscribe to my channel because in a couple of weeks, I'll be doing a giveaway. And the prize in the giveaway is a voucher for a certification test for the advanced developer exam. And that has a value of around $200. It's going to be one attempt for the exam. So if you pass it, then you are a UiPath advanced developer. And, and if you don't pass it, then you'll have to pay for your second attempt yourself. But this is a great opportunity to try out the exam. I don't know how I'll be drawing the prize. Uh, you guys can leave a comment uh, below uh, with suggestions on how to draw it. And, and don't just suggest that I draw you because I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do some kind of lottery and we'll see how that works out for everyone. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Make sure you stay safe and take care.